Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Q4OS. Now, Q4OS, um, the main selling point is performance. Uh, it can run on a very small amount of RAM and small amount of CPU usage. So uh, there's two versions available. There is the uh, what they call the Aquarius desktop, which is uh, basically KDE Plasma. And then you've got uh, Trinity, which is KDE before Plasma came out. Um, and Trinity um, makes Q4 OS incredibly light indeed. So uh, today I'm going to show you how to install the Trinity desktop. Um, and this is for all those people that have got low spec machines or really want to get the most juice out of their machine. Uh, and they're not too worried about all the fancy features that KDE Plasma brings to the table. So here we are. Uh, to get Q4 OS, um, go to www.q4os.org, then click on the Downloads tab, and there's four versions available. You can see the Aquarius Plasma is one and a half gigabytes, uh, Trinity is uh, one gigabyte, and then you've got uh, an install CD which is 834 or 804 for the 32 bit version. I'm going to go for the live version. Uh, so if we click this, it asks you to donate, and you can do that if you so wish. Uh, they also accept Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, if you don't want to donate at this point uh, because you just want to try it out, just click Not Now, take me to the download. That takes you to SourceForge. The download will start um, in a few seconds' time. As you can see there, so that's now downloading. Now to create the USB drive, you need to go, I've opened another tab, and you need to go to um, etcher.balena.io, that's E-T-C-H-E-R dot B-A-L-E-N-A dot I-O. You can also just type etcher.io and it will come to the same place. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do this for Windows and for Linux, so uh, if, you're on Linux, if you're on Windows, click on Download Etcher. And uh, click download here. I'll be doing Linux later on. Um, so this is for the window users at the minute. Just click download and you see it's downloaded in the top corner. Once they are downloaded you can close the web browser and open a file explorer down here and in your downloads folder if you click on downloads you should see Q4 OS um, with the latest version that's downloaded and Belina Etcher. Double click on the Blina Retcher setup. Uh, when the license agreement and the setup screen appears, you can close down the um, File Explorer to make more space. And on the license agreement, uh, by the way, you'll need a blank USB drive and you need to insert it into your machine now. If there's anything on that USB drive you want to keep, um, back it up um, because everything will be wiped for Q Q4 OS to go onto it. Anyway, at the license agreement, click I agree. When Etcher is installed, um, it should start automatically, but if it doesn't, um, an icon will appear on the desktop like this one. All you have to do is double click it. When Etcher appears, uh, click Flash from File, choose the Q4 OS ISO image that was downloaded earlier, click Select Target, choose your USB drive, make sure it's the right size and looks about, uh, has the right name. Just place a tick in the box, click select, and then click flash. Then click yes uh, when the warning appears. And you can see it starts flashing to the drive. And when you see the flash complete message, um, you can move on to the next stage. Now for Windows users, uh, you can skip ahead um, to the time on the video that says here. Uh, for Linux users, I'll now show you how to um, create the USB drive using Linux. I'm now going to show you how to install Q4 OS to a USB drive using Linux. So here's my Linux PC. I'm going to open a web browser. It can be any one of your choice. Again, you need to go to the q4os.org website and click on Downloads. Again, we're going to click on the uh, Trinity Live. And we're going to go for, uh, not now, take me to the download. And you can see it's going to start downloading straight away. Then we're going to go to um, 
etcher.bellina.io or you can just do etcher.io if you want to uh, click on you can accept the agreement click on download etcher uh, this time you want etcher for linux x64 app image and click download obviously if you're using a 32-bit machine uh, you use the 32-bit version but i'm using 64-bit so click on download and that downloads as well in the top right corner when they have downloaded go to the downloads folder so you have to open a, obviously a file explorer um, you open up the downloads folder and then you need to right click on this app image click on properties go to permissions and you need to make sure allow this file to run as a program if you're doing this from a terminal you need to open up a terminal you need to cd into your downloads folder so if I do pwd you can see I'm in home gallery downloads if I do ls and what you need to do is chmod plus x and the name of the Bellina etcher file in between quotes now you have to make sure the name is 100% correct and you get the case right as shown above and there you go that's done uh, you can either run Bellina etcher by double clicking within the file explorer or to run an app image from a terminal all you have to do is dot forward slash and then the name of the app image and if you put the ampersand at the end you'll run it as a background task and you see that Bellina etcher starts uh, if you want to run it from the graphical file manager all you have to do is double click on it and you can see that loads so we can close this file explorer now again you need your USB drive installed click flash from file select the ISO image that you downloaded select your target which is your USB drive click select and then click flash enter your password and as with Windows it will start to um, flash to the USB drive and this is how long it's going to take um, there's also a verification stage that happens afterwards so that'll be another two or three minutes so you can come back and say 10 minutes and it should say flash completed when the process is finished uh, whether you're on Windows or Linux you'll see a screen like this one that says flash completed now at this stage you put the USB drive in the machine you want to put Q4 OS onto now the install guide I'm going to do here is replacing the entire operating system with Q4 OS so be aware that you need to back up the system uh, make sure you can get it back if you don't decide you don't want Q4 OS if you do want Q4 OS uh, reboot your machine with the USB drive in it and the machine boots up Press the relevant function key to bring up the boot menu. In my case, it's F7. It differs from manufacturer to manufacturer. And when you get to the um, select boot device, pick your USB drive, and then press return. The Q4 OS menu will appear, and you want to select the top option. And it will now load into the live image of Q4 OS. If your wireless card is detected, it will ask you to select your uh, Wi-Fi network and enter the password. You'll also be asked to select your language. When Q4 OS loads into the live environment, uh, you can close this welcome window, we don't need it. And uh, what we're going to do is click Install Q4 OS. Select your language, so in my case British. Uh, click Next. Choose where you are in the world, it's already picked London, but you can obviously choose the time zone that suits you. Click Next. Uh, choose your keyboard layout, uh, it's already selected English UK and the default but obviously you can choose the one that suits you uh, click next and then there's four options you can choose you can choose Q4 desktop and that gives you everything office suites all the recommended applications basic is the full desktop but with only a small set of applications you've got the live which is the same as what you're installing here uh, what you've got on the screen here and then you've got pure which is a very minimal system so I'm going to choose Q4 OS desktop because that's the one most suited to the everyday Linux user and I'm going to click next and then it says do you want to install alongside uh, or do you want to um, replace a partition, erase a disk now I'm going to erase the disk now this will wipe the disk completely and install Q4 OS as the only operating system if you do this you need to make sure anything that's already on there is backed up or, or you don't need it anymore because it will be wiped uh, with that warning in place, uh, click next and then it, you're setting up a user so enter your name 
Uh, you can choose to enter a different username if you want or leave it as it is. Give your computer a name and then enter a password and repeat it. You can choose to log in automatically, but I never recommend doing this. It says the root password is the same as the user password. If you want a different password for root, you untick this box and fill in the password you want to use as root. I'm going to leave it checked and then click next. We're now at a summary. This is the point of no return. If you're not happy, uh, escape out and, and uh, cancel the installation. But if you want to continue, click the install button and Q4OS will start to install to your machine. When the installation is complete, uh, you'll see this all done message. If you leave this restart now ticked and click done. When you reboot, take out the USB drive and you should boot into the installed version of Q4OS. When you boot up, you'll see this screen to choose the top option by pressing return and Q4OS should load. Now during the uh, load screen, it'll, um, bring up your installation language and it'll ask do you want to install the Fastview installation language uh, click to install those and then it will say uh, Q4OS is complete and it will boot into this screen and you've got this welcome screen and that's it really and um, that's how you install Q4OS uh, it's worth noting there's a review on the way a full review but uh, let's have a look at HTOP and the memory usage is uh, currently 715 megabytes, which is uh, much like Linux Lite. Uh, you have to allow for the fact that uh, obviously Simple Screen Recorder is using um, a fair bit of memory. And that's the end of the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.